Hey everybody, <laughs> we have a vlog for you this week. It's been really dreary here in LA. So I kind of wanted to do like a cozy, a little cozy at home vlog, do a little cooking. I am going to be making one of my favorite Instant Pot recipes, which is this like beef stew. I haven't made it in like years, so I'm really excited to share that with y'all today. I was really debating between that and, and like a beef and broccoli, but it's stew weather for sure. <laughs> so we're doing that today. Um, and I have some other things just around the house that I gotta do. Okay. I had to put Josie to the side because she was getting a little crazy, huh? Before we get cooking, I wanted to show y'all my new sheets. Oh, they're so nice. They're from Brooklinen. And this video is in partnership with Brooklinen. Brooklinen is a luxury sheet company creating high quality home goods at fair prices. I have the Lux sateen sheets. The fabric itself is a bit of a heavier weight fabric and that's because it's a more tightly woven cloth. So that's also what makes the sheen and makes it very smooth and buttery and a bit on the warmer side. I actually have a little mini heater, floor heater that I'll use in my room and I'll also put a heavy blanket or something or a quilt over my sheets and I haven't had to do that. Pretty much these sheets feel like you're in a very expensive hotel. I have purchased Brooklinen a couple times over the past few years, but I have always purchased their linen line. I just love the look of linen and it is very lightweight, which is great for Los Angeles. So I have it in two different colors here. And I'm gonna show you, just in terms of the texture, how it's very different. You can really see that the sateen is, yeah, buttery, very smooth. The linen is has more of a texture to it. It's definitely just like a different vibe than the sateen. I've had like this specific color in the linen for, since I got this bed, because I sized up. This is a king size bed, so I've had it for like three and a half years now, it's gone through so many washes. Um, it just gets softer and softer. I really love linen, but this has been very nice. And I'm gonna continue, especially in the winter time, to use these sheets. Brook Linen really does pay attention to the finishings. For example, the pillowcase is pretty much like a big pocket. You put the pillow through and it has an open, flappy end, but they add an extra thing where there's an extra little pocket for your pillow. You don't ever see the pillow because it has an extra little covering. These are just little things that really make a difference to me. What I got this time around from Brooklinen is the Lux Hardcore Sheet Bundle. And what this entails is a core sheet set, a duvet cover, and two extra pillowcases. Uh, the website's really easy to use. So if you start building your bundle, you choose your core sheet set first. So that is a flat sheet, a fitted sheet, and two pillowcases. I did these in cream and the color basil really caught my eye. So I got that for the duvet cover as well as the two additional pillowcases. So all four of my pillowcases are king sized. And I didn't realize that Brooklinen has so much cute stuff outside of bedding. They have like loungewear, tons of bath stuff. They actually have this uh, checkered bath towel that I really have my eye on. And if you have your eye on anything, this is definitely the time to buy because right now they're having their sleep week sale, which ends on March 27th. You can get 20% off all Brooklinen products using the link in my description box. If you're watching this video after March 27th, you can use my code STEPHANIEV to get $20 off any order over $100. You really can't go wrong with a set of Brooklinen sheets and I'm clearly a paying customer for years. Their sheets have really stood the test of time. So you know that you're really getting high quality sheets for your money and they're actually gonna last. Check out Brooklinen in the description box down below. I also have like, you know, my discount code information, everything down there as well. Let's get into the video. kind of prepped getting ready to start cooking. I feel like the best things that I make are in the Instant Pot. This recipe really doesn't have that many ingredients. So, okay, if you're not a meat eater, I apologize, but here I have cubed up um, almost three pounds of beef chuck, baby, like golden, 
potatoes, four baked carrots, <laughs> a yellow onion, and some garlic, and then we are gonna add frozen peas, but that's after it's all been cooked. Salt and pepper, we're gonna use canola oil and beef broth to deglaze the pot. You'll see, you can use water as well. The recipe I uh, have like uses water, but I just use beef broth. And like the only seasoning things you have to get are the uh, bay leaves, like, I mean, and tomato paste. Oh, and you need some flour at the end too. So at the end you need the peas and the flour. I'm gonna saute, let it heat up a bit and then put some canola oil in there. It fully cooked and has been sitting for, it's about 30 minutes here. Oh. Yeah, so no more venting needed. Ooh. At this point, we're gonna be thickening uh, the stew and adding in the frozen peas. Three tablespoons. I guess I'm gonna make them, I guess, like full ones. Add back into the stew. That looks gross. Tomorrow, it's like really not gonna be liquidy at all like the leftovers when you reheat them first of all so good because the meat just gets more and more tender and you know like soaks up all the the broth so say i think it's like 10 ounces this one's 16 ounces so that's fine there we go over half and now this just needs like a couple minutes and the peas will be fully warmed through. Using my our place knife. Ugh. Everyone needs a bread knife, okay? I do like <laughs> Okay. 
wire it back in. Oops. Doesn't that just look cozy? Hmm? The meat just like breaks apart. So I take a piece like this and it just like breaks apart. I think I liked it. I'm really glad that I started cooking again. I'm gonna make my um, beef and broccoli next in the Instant Pot. If you have any favorite Instant Pot recipes, please let me know. I have a Trader Joe's that's so close to my house and I just, I never go. I think it's just cause whenever I pass by it, it's always so busy. But if I just go during a time that's, you know, not a peak time, I think it'd be fine. But I know that there are a lot of like, kind of almost ready frozen meal kind of situations at Trader Joe's that would be good for a single person. Because yeah, I have been eating way too much takeout for the past, you know, year or more. <laughs> and I, need to start eating more at home, even if it's just reheating things that are like frozen meals, uh, because obviously getting takeout all the time is very pricey. I wanted to do a whole video kind of testing some of your like recommended or favorite Trader Joe's foods, specifically like the meals, or maybe even like an easy meal that you create or that you regularly eat out of Trader Joe's foods. Does that make sense? Like for example, I really like their like pizza dough and their pizza sauce. When I post this video, I'll ask on Instagram. So maybe you can say it in the comments or answer the question on, on stories. Oh my gosh, my brain is going dead. We're definitely done for today. I think like the food coma is starting to set in now. Um, tomorrow, I gotta like clean some of my fish tanks. I'm not even sure if I've ever really showed my tanks on camera before. So you'll meet Phoebe officially. She's very feisty. Um, okay, yeah, see you tomorrow.
not sure if I've ever really, really introduced y'all to Phoebe, my female betta. This is a like, I think six and a half gallon planted tank. Female bettas can actually live with other fish or a lot of them can. She initially had two ram's horn like adult snails in with her and she immediately, like not trying to eat them, she just attacked them and then they died. And for a long time, she had no tank buddies, no companions in there with her. By the way, this is my first, like, this is my first ever planted tank. I've learned a lot in this process, so it's not exactly how I would want it to look, but I think it still looks nice. But anyways, like I was saying, she killed those first two snails, and I don't know, I think maybe some eggs or something hitched a ride from my other tank, which I can show you, that just has plants in it because all of a sudden this explosion of baby snails happened. You can see all these tiny little snails. They're not even that tiny anymore, they're growing. I think that they're actually known to eat tiny little snails like this to like control the population, but she has no interest in them. I could try and get them out like pretty much one by one, but what I ended up doing was getting a snail called an assassin snail. When I got them, I acclimated, I put them in there and they've just disappeared. But I am seeing some random empty shells now. I'm just surprised that she just completely ignores all these little snails now. She has one silver eye, which looks angry all the time. And then the other eye is black. So there's a silver eye. And then here's the black guy. Oh, baby. I think this is like a three gallon tank that I initially got for Phoebe. And then once I got it, I just realized it was just too small for her. I ended up just using this tank kind of as like a quarantine tank for some plants. I just got these, I stuck in some water a couple days ago because these are going to go into the big tank that I'm planning. This, my friends, is the larger tank, the 10 gallon tank that I want to put over there. And I'm gonna put this one where the, t the other tank is now. I really wanna transport it over there without disturbing the plants and everything. So I'm gonna have to really drain it of water and then just do a a refill. I really can't start planting all the plants and stuff in the bigger one till I get it over here so I don't have to move it. Um, it could work over here but the space is just so tight. So I have this cord uh, you know organization box that would go over to the side here um, and it would just, there'd just be no room. It's just too cramped here for such a big tank. So that's why I want to put it, um, on the other side. And also I just look at that area more. Sorry, Phoebe. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to like clean some of the poop and I'm also going to clean Phoebe's a bit. What do you think, Phoebe? Hmm? She's checking out the snail. She sees those tiny little snails. Or maybe there's a scud in between the rocks. Hmm? 
I just stuck some of that seaweed in this tank, just a little, little bunch to see how they felt about it. I like betas because they are really like such curious fish. They got personality. <laughs> For sure. Look at her. Very active and very aware of their surroundings. Look, she's like hunting. I really think that there are some scuds left in here. She's trying to find them. You know what? I should... Oh, okay, you're looking right at me. I already fed you. <laughs> Why does she look so upset? In the arms of the angel. I feel like she was really mentally preparing herself <laughs> for the rain. I'm going to be watering all of my plants and you might think like, okay, what's the big deal about that? Well, this might be gross, but I use a little bit of Pretty much, it's, it's the tank water that I took out of my tanks, which just has like snail poop in it. Um, and I use just a little bit of it in my plants. It seriously fertilizes the plants. Like a couple of them have just like sprung to life since I started doing this. Here's the plant zone. <laughs> I don't know why I always say it like that. Ever since I started doing the snail poop, which was only like a month and a half ago, these are all brand new leaves from like right now. And so much new growth. And I also add Super Thrive Liquid Concentrate. It includes kelp. I don't know, <laughs> that made me excited, but... We put a little bit of that in there too. Maybe it's overkill, but I mean, my plants are, they're living it up. Here are all my propagated. Using regular sink water, I try and get any kind of like algae or anything that forms under here out. You might see that I just have these like water bottles sitting here and I, they're always sitting here I just emptied water that was in here into these two water bottles because when you let sink water sit out for a few days, the uh, chlorine that is in the water will dissipate, I guess. It'll leave <laughs> the water. I do this to actually put the water into my tanks and I use a solution in my tanks to dechlorinate the water um but i just i like to do this too just in case i guess and i think that this same principle probably applies to these plants so i just do this now for them too there we go indoor plants one drop per four ounces Oh. I just squeeze it onto them. Okay, I don't wanna gross you guys out, but I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you what the water looks like. So if you don't wanna see what the water looks like, just turn away for like a few seconds. Poo. <laughs> Snail poo, pretty much. This one is, I forget what kind of plant it is, but it was thriving and then all of a sudden was not. So I decided to cut it down and we shall see if it grows back. I really let them dry out and then I give them a soak. 
I think the problem that a lot of people have with indoor plants, because a lot of indoor plants are like tropical plants, right? They'll just water it, like go around with a little cup and just put some water in there. But you're not actually watering it. All you're doing is putting water onto the surface of the dirt. And then it kind of like goes off to the sides and it never reaches the roots. And that's why your indoor plants are dying. You got to like soak them if you got big ones like you got to bring them into the shower you know <laughs> that kind of thing All right, y'all, that's gonna be it for this vlog. Uh, I'm honestly not sure what happened to my outro, but if you watched this far, thank you so much. Again, thank you to Brooklinen for partnering with me in this video, 20% off right now during sleep week. If you need new sheets, this is definitely the time to buy. Love y'all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.